What is up, guys? It is Joe. I'm back. As you can see, I'm in the studio. We are back home. I was out of town. I was in Minnesota visiting my girlfriend. Today, I am back, and it's good to be here with you. The lights are back. The audio is back. Everything is great, and I am pumped to be here talking to you about the portal. Guys, before we get into the portal talk here today, let me tell you this. We're closing in on 2,000 subs on this YouTube channel, and as we get closer to 2,000 subs, I'm going to drop an update on how to enter into the Lavender Quarter Zip giveaway. We did one at 1,000. We're going to do it again at 2,000. Get yourself a sweet Lavender Quarter Zip like the one I'm rocking here. I love it. I wear it all the time. We're going to give one away at 2,000. So be sure and consider subscribing if you want a chance to get your hands on one of these. But guys, let me tell you this. Now, I want to get this out of the way immediately. I've made a couple of videos already on Doug McDaniel. I think I've had a total of three, maybe two. Uh, K-State did land the commit. It was their top player in the portal, and we were so excited to see it. I'm stoked about it. And I've kind of already outlined my thoughts on Doug as a player, so I'm just going to give you the general overview of the recruitment process, what I you know expect going forward, and so on and so forth, some different thoughts surrounding the recruitment, surrounding the process of getting him to K-State. And then I'll go into the who is next category for K-State. We'll do a typical, you know, couple of guys to watch, but there's some intel alongside each of these three players I'm going to mention. As the dead period hits, it's officially, I guess at the time you're watching this, it's uh, Friday, and the dead period will be up on Thursday the 11th. Uh, so K-State is currently not able to go visit recruits. I think you're able to text, call, and Zoom. I could be wrong on that. I also know nothing, so that could be entirely false, and that's on me. Doug McDaniel, man, what a massive addition to the squad. There's your dude. There's your pure point guard you've been asking for. Every one of the fan base. This is the guy to look at. A sophomore capable of averaging 16, 5, and 4 in the Big Ten. The dude's quick off the ball. He's awesome in ball screen. He's awesome off dribble. He can do anything you need him to on the court right now. Immediately right now. He's your day one starter at point guard. I know that the argument's going to say you're going to play him off ball, on ball with Data Ames. It's going to be pretty positionless in my mind between Data and Doug. But that is one fifth of the national championship roster crossed off the list in my mind. I'll outline those thoughts here in a second, but I just want to give you my thoughts immediately regarding the Doug McDaniel edition. The first thing's this, guys. There was so much negativity saying this coaching staff just keeps swinging, they're going to keep missing. I don't know that the staff really misses all that much. Yes, you're interested in a ton of players, but like you look at the guys we've added in the portal, Keontae Johnson, I know there's heart things, so there's the caveat there. That's a big addition. Then you look at Arthur Kaluma, then you look at Tyler Perry, there was massive amounts of schools invested in both those dudes. SEC schools, Big 12 schools, and they could have had, you know, what some would perceive as better options going elsewhere. K-State wins those recruitments. You win the recruitment of David Castillo over both Kansas, Oklahoma State, and a couple other programs that were in the final cutdown list. Obviously, everybody and their brother wanted him, but K-State was able to win that. There was a lot of negativity basically saying, this coaching staff, man, they're all talk, you know, they're all bark, no bite, we're never going to get dues. Guys, they kind of just told everybody to shut up. They put their money where their mouth is, and they're like, you know what? Quit talking about us. You don't know our game. You are not familiar with our game. Here's the best player in the portal right now. Bang! K-State. And not only the fact that they beat several teams to Doug McDaniel, including Houston, including TCU, who he visited uh, just before K-State. There's a couple of big teams up there as well. I think Kentucky was interested as well. There was a whole list that I saw. I can't remember off the top of my head. But not only did you land your top guy in the portal the first guy you're looking at this is the guy we want more than anybody in the portal right now we need to get this guy on campus you did that you smacked the 95 mile an hour fastball 440 straight over the fountains you got your guy you found him you correctly identified him you brought him to manhattan and you sealed the deal you did your thing that's huge one for one with the exact perfect person you want last year was max Azmus. you got close it didn't work out no cigar this year you're not taking any chances we got it done that's huge and the fact that our first portal commit last season, last cycle, I should say, was Tyler Perry. It was, I think, May 2nd was the exact date. Guys, it's April. I mean, that is your first commit. That's a month earlier than last season. That is huge. The guys took the message that kind of slipped through the cracks of, all right, we got to be more aggressive early. Bang, they did it. They took care of business. They got Doug McDaniel. And this is where it ties into the next option. Guys around the country want to know who the point guard is on the team. If you're not a point guard, you want to know who the point guard is. All right, who's facilitating? Who's running the offense? Who's going to get me the ball? Who's going to do this? Who is that guy? K-State goes out and gets one of the best available dudes in the portal. And here's some ties to Mr. Doug McDaniel from guys we've seen. I don't know if you've looked through his Instagram comments, but literally everyone who was prominent in basketball commented, and it was kind of a funny thing clicking through all the comments. Patrick Gungba, that's a trigger name for a lot of people. Uh, he commented because these guys were at the same high school and basically said congrats, blah, blah, blah. But the biggest name you saw in those comment sections, how about Rutgers center Clifford Amori? Now, Clifford Amori has been rumored to have basically every team across the country interested in him. That's facts. That's the truth. The guy's a top five player in the portal as it sits right now, as you're watching this. So it's not like the guy's going to have any shortage of suitors. 
This is going to be a massive recruitment. Doug McDaniel was a massive recruitment, but that's not stopping K-State. These dudes are not just waiting around to see, well, you know, he's pretty big. Kansas wants him. Houston wants him. Kentucky, uh, uh, I about said Donovan Klingon instead of UConn. So UConn wants him. That's what I meant to say. There's a lot of guys that want Clifford Amore. Also, there's a lot less, to, you know, less notable teams that I didn't mention. But K-State is right in the mix of those teams. You look through Doug McDaniel's comments. Big Cliff commented. I forget what it is off the top of my head. Maybe it's fire emojis. Maybe it's something cool. Apparently, these two are pretty close friends. That's been going around social media where Clifford Amore is a good friend of Doug McDaniels. They have some type of connection. Maybe it's the fact they both played in the Big Ten and got to know each other. Maybe they grew up together. I'm not entirely sure what the case is. All we know is that they're good buddies. Now, if I'm the most athletic rim running big in the portal, rim running center in the portal, who is more athletic than everybody in the current league that I could commit to, and I have a buddy who is one of the best passing point guards in the nation committing to a team in the best basketball conference in America... I think I can connect the dots to say, okay, I'll play with my guy who will pass me the ball better than everybody else. I'll play in the league that is better than every other league in America. And I'll be the best center in the Big 12 if I commit to Kansas State right now. Not saying he's committing right now because it is the dead period. I don't want to make that up. Uh, but it sounds like there's some storm about K-State getting in the mix for Clifford Amore. Now, here's the deal. I've talked about him in the past. I believe I could I could be wrong on this. But the guy's fresh off a season averaging 10.4 points, 8.3 rebounds. He is hyper-athletic. Throw out everything you think about a big. So the kind of uh, laboring body, the dude getting up the court, kind of taking his time, the big body dude in the low block that's a physical presence. Toss out everything you think about bigs. This dude is a physical specimen in the sense that he's the most athletic dude on the court at the center position. You know, there's clips of him throwing down one-handed dunks, windmill dunks over dudes' heads, basically with half a jump off of a putback. He's firmly from Nigeria. Coming out of high school, he was a top, well, I guess just outside the top 50, 51st player in the country, the 12th ranked center, and the 5th player in the state of New Jersey. Currently in the portal, he is the 5th best player in the portal and the 2nd ranked center available. Top 5 guy, Clifford Amore. He immediately has the presence to be the best Big 12 center. Immediately. If you commit to K-State, the only dude that's going to rival you is going to be Hunter Dickinson. I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. I mean, Brandon Garrison was really good last year. He's transferring. He'll probably end up in the Big 12, but still. You think about these connections. Clifford Amore, Doug McDaniel, those are massive, massive additions. Like, Hall of Fame level massive additions. And that's not even it. K-State is still linked to a couple more guys I want to talk about. But that's the gist of Clifford Amore. Sounds like he's good buddies with Doug McDaniel. I know I'd want to catch lobs considering I'm jumping 13 and a half feet above the rim. Not above the rim. 13 and a half feet in the air and throwing down over somebody's head. I know I'd want to catch with the guy that can get me the rock like that in Doug McDaniel. Now, I know I'm moving a little bit slow because I'm stoked and I have a lot to talk about about everybody. But at this point, let me just say thank you guys so much for all the support on the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you as we continue to grow this thing. I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to have you guys along for the ride and vice versa. It's been a really cool pastime and I appreciate you guys. Now, here's a player I want to talk about because I am over the moon excited about this player. UNC Greensboro transfer, Michael Brown-Jones. K-State's been linked to him. A couple of different teams have been linked to him. He's not a top five guy in the portal, but oh my gosh, does his game stand out. I also want to say some of these rumblings you hear are just dudes tweeting, being like, wouldn't it be cool if we had this guy? Like, I tweeted Bronny to K-State imminent. See if that happens. That'd be awesome. But um, I, I think a lot of this can just be rumblings and buzz and different things going on. So I don't want to claim like I know anything. But Michael Brown-Jones, it sounds like, has some interest in K-State or vice versa. K-State has interest in Michael Brown-Jones. Last season at UNC Greensboro, he was a stud. Averaged 18.9 points per game, 7.5 rebounds, and 1.1 assists per game. Here's the kicker. The kid's 6'8", 220, plays the power forward position. You have a guess at what he shoots from three? Probably somewhere around 35 on a good day. The kid's shooting 43.1% from three, and he's a volume shooter. He's not just taking four this season, you know, hit, you know, I guess a bad example for four because then he hit two, it's 50, whatever. He's shooting 43.1% from three as a 6'8 power forward. Watching every single player that I've seen enter the portal, because if you haven't followed the portal report on YouTube, you absolutely should subscribe to them. You can see everybody that hits the portal and they usually have the highlight tape up within an hour of them hitting the portal. Out of everybody I've watched, which I would probably argue is somewhere in the in the two to 300 range of the different players that have entered the portal, which isn't a lot when you have 2,000 players, but it is what it is. His game is the most intriguing to me as a pure prospect. His game is mystifying to watch. That's a great adjective to use in this case because you watch all these other guys, you're like, all right, he's athletic, he's this, he's this, he has this ability, this ability, whatever. Michael Brown-Jones has one of the most complete games of anybody in the portal. That's the difference. You know, you spot guys here and you say, well, he's got to be a better defender. He's got to be a better shooter. He's only, you know, a sophomore. He's got time to grow. His body isn't there physically. Every single checklist box that you could check off about a power forward, Michael Brown-Jones fits. Great shooter. Great scorer. Great rebounder. 
You think about the three-point shooting. Think about the free-throw line shooting. It's great size, 6'8", 220. He rebounded over a lot of people. He's currently the 66th best player in the portal uh, through 247 Sports and the 11th ranked power forward in the portal. I think he should be higher than that, but I am okay with finding guys lower on the list, lower being 60. I think for reference, Cam Carter's now down to 80, 85-ish, just as, a, as an example for K-State fans in the portal. Michael Brown-Jones is a massive pickup if you can get him to Manhattan. My third and final player, this is a recent development and one that I thought there'd be no way in hell happening. How about Iowa State's Omaha Blue? Before you say, no, this guy sucks, he sat on the bench, he's a five-star All-American, but he sat on the bench, knock it off. Let me tell you this. I know he averaged 2.4 points and 1.3 rebounds per game. On seven minutes per game, the guy played, I think, 20 games all season, 17 games all season. I'm understanding of that. I think that's an awful situation at Iowa State. Iowa State's got a great team. They've got a great coach. They've got smart people. But you let the kid with the most upside of anyone on your team ride the bench that long, there's no way in hell they're coming back next year. They've now lost two five-star All-American level players or five-star McDonald's All-American players in the last two seasons. I know potential gets you fired. That's the narrative that people run with. If I have a starting roster spot at that three or four spot open, why not give the kid that can be a one and done on any given night the opportunity to get out there for 25 minutes a game? The dude can play. And not only that, there's connections to K-State, including an article and some other stuff I'll talk about. Let me start with the article. Mr. Joe Tipton, he's a guru. He works for On3. I hope it's not 247. I'm pretty sure it's On3. Joe Tipton posted an article about different rumblings, different players in the portal, who's contacting them, so on, contacting them, so on and so forth. In the section on Omaha Blue, Kansas State was mentioned. And not only that, it wasn't like 10 teams mentioned. It was mentioned as one of two teams possibly in the lead for Omaha Blue. It was Kansas State and it was Nebraska. Now, I know the immediate conversation to say is, well, Omaha Blue ended up picking Iowa State over Nebraska. Nebraska did more with them in high school, so they are probably in the lead. That could be true. That could not be true. But the dude would be such a great pickup. Now, I know he's going to be commanding NIL money. I know he's going to command different things because of his you know, process alone, because of the ability alone. But this is a dude with unlimited upside. I mean, absolutely. This is a top 20 player in the NBA draft if you can develop him into an okay role player. That's the, that's the reality of the situation. And if you want to talk connections, he also, similar to Terrace Reed, who visited K-State earlier this offseason, played for Rodney Perry at Link Academy in that same team, that 2020-2021 team. He was that dude. Coming out of high school, just to give you an example, he was the 12th ranked player in his class, the third ranked power forward in his class, and the number one player in the state of Iowa. Chose Iowa State over Nebraska, and I think Iowa as well. And now, currently as it sits, even though he averaged 2.4 and 1.3, he's the 30th best player in the portal and the third ranked power forward currently out there. I think he would be a massive addition. You could play him at the three guard. You could play him at the four spot. It kind of depends what happens with Arthur Kaluma for both Michael Brown-Jones and Omaha Ballou. But spoiler alert, guys, the staff's not going to shy away from any recruitments. Until you have a set-in-stone roster, Arthur Kaluma's coming back. He will be back. We're not going to recruit another guy because we know he's back right now. Guys, we're 50-50 about it, maybe even less than that. We don't know that Art's going to be back. Recruit the best power forwards available. That's what this staff is doing, and they're making it apparent we're not missing on anybody. We are going balls to the wall, bringing dudes to Manhattan. So first of all, I want to commend everybody that's supported on Wildcat NIL and helped us grow this collective. Um, I'm, I'm not really like sponsored or anything like that, but I just like doing my part to not only encourage people to donate because you see what the effect it can have, but it's just a good way to give back to the community. I'm going to be straight up. I don't even know what the Ahern Fund does, or Ahern, which people like to say and correct me. Um, I don't even know what that fund does. I'm sure it's a great thing. I'm sure it's great people. Continue to support Wildcat NIL any opportunity you can. 10 bucks a month at the minimum. It helps out. I saw the other day we're at 550. Once you get to 600 total uh, monthly donors, or donors in total, once we hit 600, there's a $250,000 incentive available. Guys, that can buy you a player on this list. Maybe that's not the truth. Maybe I'm undervaluing people, but... 250 G's right there. Let's find 50 more people to get to that next hump. But guys, I'm going to get out of here. These are the three dudes to watch. It sounds like there's some rumblings. We'll see if any of this comes true. But all I know is this. I, for one, will not be doubting the staff anytime soon in the transfer portal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Go Cats.